drive cut off. Bryant throws up a three and hits nothing but bottom. Wow. Dick, pass outside. Bryant fakes it. Gets cut off. Still finds a way. Count it just as the clock was running out. Nigel Pruitt coming back is Leonard, but then going it down is. Drive and a steal for the Bears. Bryant pull up from outside. Nothing but bottom. And a great decision there. Defense was hanging back in the lane. Didn't force it, just got himself a nice pull up. For the old Mercer Bears. Three point for Brian. That's gonna be good. And he's able to answer back. What's going on everybody? It's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News. And well, a lot of you have already heard this story already. Earlier in the year, in about February the 2nd, 2016. A basketball, a Mercer basketball student was shot and killed in Macon. And if you guys don't know about Macon, Macon is probably uh, about three hours away from Savannah. The way you can get to Macon only to get to from Macon, well, from Savannah to Macon is you take I-16. Uh, Macon is not in Savannah. For you guys that's not in Georgia, I'm just trying to explain the distance from Macon. Um, he attended mercer university uh there was the th those are the mercer bears that's a division one uh school underneath the southern conference now jabri bryan was a guard for the mercer bears he wore the number 34 he was six foot four 185 pounds and he joined mercer university basketball team back in 2011 and i have some stats on foul as well in 2011-2012 year, he averaged uh, 13 minutes. Also, he averaged 5.2 points, uh, 0.5 steals, 0.2 blocks, and 3.2 rebounds. In his 2012-2013 year, he averaged 3.1 points. Uh, he also averaged 0.5 steals and 1.8 rebounds. And in his 2013-2014 year, he also averaged 3.6 points, and he also averaged 1.7 rebounds. And in his 2014-2015 season, that was his actually his best season, uh, where he had the most minutes and the most points, uh, where he averaged just under 30 minutes per game of playing time and he also averaged 7.8 points 1.4 steals 1.3 assists and 4.5 rebounds on average and in his last season 2015 2016 season he had a injury so he didn't really play much he only had he only averaged about 10 minutes uh what the total minutes played for that season 65 minutes so he only averaged 3.2 points and he only averaged 2.7 rebounds now jabri brian he was a graduate student and he was set to actually complete his mba degree uh actually when the season was over with and he would have graduated and he would have done i'm sure he would have done great things with his with his life but he was taken away like i said on february the second 2016 that was actually Macon's first homicide of that year and he actually died in the parking lot of the flash food store he was sitting in the driver's seat of a 2006 Chevrolet Monte Carlo he was backed into a parking space and more about that flash food store what I'm hearing about that store that I mean I don't know anything about Macon but I'm hearing that that store was relatively close to the Mercer University campus. And I'm guessing that store is probably not even a half a mile away from the campus because a lot of college students, they go to the, the nearest store and get their snacks, get whatever they need. And he actually died around 4 p.m. They have video footage of the slaying. Now there is one of two suspects in this whole case suspect number one Damian D Ray Henderson he was named the shooter in his incident but there was also another person of interest well that was charged with the murder as well by the name of Jarvis Miller 
I'm gonna try to put some pictures of him as well. There's not too many pictures up of him. Now, Mr. Henderson was actually driving one of his, I believe his ex-girlfriends or current girlfriend, Nissan Sentra, her car at the time. So Henderson drove the car to pick up Jarvis Miller because I believe Jarvis Miller actually knew the victim. I believe they were acquainted somehow. And they actually met up at the flash food store around 4 p.m. And what I'm hearing from, this is from Henderson's side. They're saying that Henderson was in the car the whole time and Jabri, well, Jabri Bryan and Jarvis Miller, Jarvis Miller was in the passenger seat uh, trying to make the deal and Henderson was trying to blame it on Jarvis Miller that he shot Jabri, but it was actual video evidence evidence that Henderson, he got the car. Now, Jarvis Miller is already in the car with Jabri Bryant. So Henderson walks up to the driver's side of the 2006 car that Jabri was riding. And, you know, Jabri was saying, you know, hey, these this the Xanax is fake because I believe he was going to try to pay for it if it was, you know, legit, but, you know, it, it, it wasn't legit. So that's when Henderson pulled out his gun and shot the victim and was shooting at Jarvis Miller because they actually found two guns at the crime scene. The The gun that Jarvis Miller, that they said that he supposedly have had, they say he had a 380 handgun but it was loaded with nine millimeter bullets, so it actually couldn't fire. So um, Henderson could have actually been killed if the other guy had his gun loaded and unjammed. And also the other gun that actually killed Jabri, that was the gun of Mr. Henderson. That was a nine millimeter handgun. So Jarvis Miller was already struck in the gunfire where he eventually ran. He actually got help from the local hospital where he was treated and was jailed. So he didn't even get to go home. He was jailed. And also they found Henderson, I believe a few days later at a apartment complex on Atlanta's east side. Uh, he was at a associate's apartment when the U.S. Marshals Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force kicked in two doors to, to flush Henderson from hiding. Uh, they're saying that Mr. Henderson gave chase, that he ran from the apartment to a actually a closet, and the only thing that he had on was some socks and a few articles of clothing. So he was he was running when when they tried to catch him. Now they charged both of those guys, Mr. Henderson and Mr. Miller, with three counts of felony murder and one count each of malice murder, aggravated assault, armed robbery, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. And Henderson was additionally charged with another count of felony murder and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. And more history about Mr. Henderson. Mr. Henderson was convicted of a armed robbery back in 2002 in Clayton County. So he served a little over a decade in prison. In that prison stint, he was released in August of 2013, but just to only get rearrested and put back in the system in 2016. And what I can, what also I can say about this is there, he, when they found Brian's body, they found $300 in cash lying beside his Chevy Monte Carlo, his 06 Monte Carlo that he was driving, and they found a suspicious bottle of substance that was, I believe, the fake Xanax. And what people don't know is even if it's a fake substance, they can still charge you for trying to sell a legal substance. Um, that's something that I've heard about before and what I want to touch on is the fact that you no know, the whole transaction 
Um, how I feel about it, me personally, hey, I like to get high. I smoke. Uh, you know, I like to get elevated. Uh, everybody has their different ways to get high to release their emotions. Some people drink. Some people, you know, smoke weed. Some people do the whole coke thing. Um, other people do pills, you know, Xanaxes, Percocets, all that other stuff. And what I know about the dope game, me personally, Xanaxes aren't worth a lot of money. Like the average Xanaxes, I mean, you don't even spend no over no nothing much over three or four dollars. So the fact that they found three hundred dollars probably suggested that they that Jabri wanted to buy three hundred dollars worth of Xanaxes. And I mean, $300 worth of Xanaxes, I mean, that's probably a, a full script if he was trying to purchase that in the first in the first place. And man, you know, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm just speaking to y'all on a 100% level, you know, I'm really speaking to y'all because, you know, I've been in the streets, you know, I, I've done that before, uh, not kill somebody, but, you know, made transactions before. And things go left all the time. You know, I've been on several drug missions and, you know, drug escapades where, uh, you know, yeah, it might go okay sometimes, but there's sometimes where things just go left, you know, there's a lot of people that just really want to finesse and it don't matter, it don't matter and it don't care who they finesse, they just want that money and it was like, you know, they they left the money behind, so it was like, was, the, was it even about the money, was the money even worth it and, you know, you just got a lot of people that you know, they they just want it, you know, it don't matter at what cost that they want, it, they want it, you know, even if that means that they gonna get caught for it, they still want it. And, you know, I'm pretty sure this fake Xanax is, it really wasn't worth Jabri Bryan's life. Uh, I'm pretty sure if he knew what he knew now, he would have never uh, been and tried to make that transaction with those guys. And man, I can say this, man, uh, trust no one. Trust absolutely no one. I don't care if he's been your friend for two years, he was your neighbor, uh, you know a person that knows him. Nah, you know, in the streets, man. You know, if I didn't know you from like a family member or, you know, just if I ain't know you from like, you know, years ago, like if I ain't had like any type of history with you, like, man, I wouldn't even do any type of business with you. you no, know, that's just speaking from the street perspective from Pac Man. And one thing I can say about Jabri, he was really loved. I mean, the whole school made a whole dedication towards him. They had a candlelight visual. I mean, this was a, actually a, a big thing that happened when I first seen it. I was like, what? You know, I was getting emotional about it when I first heard about it happening in February. Because I hate to see it when people they actually make it out of Savannah, but they end up dying in another city. You know, I, I hate that, you know, because it's like, man, this guy, he had goals, aspirations. He was set to graduate. I mean, he was a decent basketball player. You know, I mean, he had his own vices in life. You know, I got my own vices in life, the things that I like to do on the side. But did that mean that he had to die? No, absolutely not. Um, that's why I say you got to watch the people that's close to you and you know You got to be aware of your own activity. You know, you don't want to be doing anything that could Put your life on the line. You know, I've got I had friends that have, that's been robbed in The middle of drug transactions by their own homies by their they, they want so called and I actually have another case that happened in I believe 2014 where some GDs from Brunswick actually killed one of my friends from high school. I'm gonna try to put that out pretty soon. I don't know which video I'm gonna put out. I don't know if I'm gonna put this video out or the other one where my homie got killed back in 2014 in Brunswick. But it, that that one was similar to this one where he got killed trying to actually leave the transaction because the transaction was had gone south and they killed him. So that's why it's like, man, when you making that transactions, man, if you if you really got to get high, if you really have to do that, man, don't go alone. Especially if you doing it with people that you don't. Know. I mean, absolutely, don't even do it with people that you don't know in the first place. 
But if you had really had to, man, I would say go with another person or go strap. You know, you don't want to end up deceased. So definitely be careful of who you associate with. Be careful of who you do business with. You know, any type of business with. You know, be careful because that person could be, man, you know, a lot of these people that's dying in Savannah, man. I know I did one video recently about the guy being killed that he was in the gang and it was like they didn't even kill him because he was in the gang they killed him because of $30 you no know, that's what I'm hearing because you know I mean you got a lot of people that's really killing over petty stuff petty you know $30 $300 I mean that ain't worth 25 years to life $300 ain't worth that no type of money is worth me going to jail for it if I didn't work for it then it's not mine. I don't need it that bad. But that's all I really have for right now. Hopefully you guys enjoy. It's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News, and I'm out. Three ball. Got it. Corner three, Jabri Bryan. And that is a spot he loves, as Bob Hoffman told us earlier. Finally, somebody able to make a shot outside.